I'm Luke Beard. I'm Chris Gurney. I'm Riley Gunter. And I'm Nash Rainey. And we are the, the Backups. Backups. All right, let's kick right into college football. Wyoming, with a tough 20-point loss, Mr. Midwest, take us away. What went wrong for the Cowboys? Uh, basically everything, but... <laughs> I mean, obviously, as an outside fan, not super involved, I think I learned a lot about this team just from the Twitter outrage that spawned out of it. Craig Bull, the head coach of the Wyoming Cowboys, is the highest paid coach in the Mountain West, and he's 2-15 and against winning teams on the road. So this is kind of a, an unfortunate reality of this program. They never really seem to get a lot of wins against the good Mountain West teams, and just tough to see. That's all you can really say. I do love that we've started putting Wyoming football above Clemson football in, in these conversations. It just shows really who's playing well and who isn't. Not messing around. Clemson wins by 21 against Georgia Tech. Huge win for the Tigers. They're finally bowl eligible. They beat a team that has beat a bunch of ranked opponents this season. I mean, this is the best Clemson's offense has looked in a while. Cade Klubnick had an outstanding performance, one interception. It happened. It was not a great interception, but shake it off and go into next week, taking on North Carolina, 3.30 game. How do we feel about Clemson football going into the end of the season? I feel like we, we back. I mean, the, the defense showed out the part of the best defense that we played in the last two weeks. And the freshmen, the, I want to also shout out the freshmen. Like, that, that gives me a good, a good outlook on the future. Like, we're we still in good hands, pretty much. Especially going into UNC, I think Drake May is the most overrated quarterback in the NCAA right now. I, I see it hard when you have him going, like last season he was way overrated. You have him having like a 500 plus yard game. If you're playing App State and you're going to 70 to 63, of course you're going to throw for 500 yards. He played a good defense. He played us last year. What happened? Through a 100 yard pick six to Nate No Fly Zone Wiggins. And it's going to happen again. Saturday. All right, no man. So you know, you, you know, you you had on a lot of quarterbacks to say they they not this and not that, and, and then they always come out and do the opposite. Oh, yeah. thing is, be... if he proves me wrong, then we lose. So let's just yeah. if he if he let's proves you up. wrong, well, your saying's overrated. He's gone into the. I'm not draft saying he's not year. bad, but you know, I just think he's overrated. You're not saying he's not bad, so you're saying he's bad. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Okay, Drake know, May. You know, he's Drake not May. as good as what people are saying. Drake May is the most NFL ready quarterback All right. in college All right. football right now. He knows where to get the ball. He probably has the best arm in college football right now when you look at a mix of accuracy and, you know, how, and power. And he can scramble if he wants to. Drake May is a guy who I think will succeed in the NFL. I think he's succeeding now because he's a really good quarterback and he's a really good college football player. And he's uplifted a team that isn't so great. Yeah. Uh, all respect to Mac Brown. I think he's a great coach. He's done a lot of great things on many different programs. But Drake May is by far the focal point of this team and once he's gone this team will not be as good as we've seen them their defense isn't great their offense is great and that's because of drake may they didn't have tez walker at the beginning of the season and he he comes in he's still playing fantastic i mean he's a great great receiver but drake may was performing without tez walker against decent to solid defenses i do think he'll have some trouble coming into clemson and playing a really good clemson defense but I wouldn't be shocked if Drake may put up big stats. I do expect a Clemson win, though. Nash, what do you think about it? I mean, you know, this, especially with the last two weeks, with strong wins against some good teams, Georgia Tech is a very good offense, and Notre Dame was 15th in the, in the college football playoff poll. Going into Death Valley, I really like this Tigers team. I think we're looking, I agree with Chris, I think we're looking the best we've looked all season, and I, I'm expecting a win because I know how good this team plays when we're playing at home. Yeah. And I, I think we have a lot of momentum. and I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. Yeah, it'll be a fun one, especially on a, a team that lost to both Georgia Tech and Virginia. Mm -hmm. I think they're still trying to pick apart or trying to heal the wounds from those games. And coming into Clemson with your head down, they'll punch in your teeth. Mm -hmm. And that's what I expect the Tigers to do. Hopefully Tyler from Spartanburg gives Dabo another call and he'll light another fire. Uh, Michigan beats Penn State. I think we all expected this. Mm -hmm. I will say... I haven't been, you know, rooting for Michigan all season. I don't hate Michigan. I don't love Michigan. I'm indifferent. Sharon Moore has made me root for this team. I love this guy. He has great charisma. He's passionate about the game. Him, him crying over the game, a lot of people, you know, we talked about last week the Caleb Williams thing, you know, he's not tough. This felt a little different to me because yeah. that just showed, like, that's heart right there. Caleb Williams was the same way to me. He has heart. But Sharon Moore has passion for his team, the coach, 
and just for the school, everyone around him. I really want to see this guy succeed. I hope he becomes a head coach at some point somewhere. And I, I hope he really he starts uplifting some programs. I, I love this guy's attitude. I, I, feel, I, felt, I feel mixed about this Michigan team. And I think, I, think this is a res I agree, this is a result we were all expecting. And I think that I'm kind of conflicted because I am a hater. And seeing all the Michigan players get on Twitter and talk, you know, say bet, bet and <laughs> act like I think my Coach favorite thing about that is like a political prisoner and not like getting in yeah. trouble for cheating. It's it's, but but I also admire, you know, that that's I admire that passion. And obviously, the only thing that I think to really focus on going into these next two weeks is how is this Michigan team going to play against a very big opponent, in Ohio State. So I'm I'm going into this game as a neutral fan. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm excited to see what they can do with or without Coach Harbaugh. I think my favorite thing about all the Michigan players going on Twitter was JJ McCarthy was the first one, and then he only bit. throws, he only, he only throws 60 for yards. 60 yards. He said that. I mean, although, just, okay. yeah, yeah, it's still one. Michigan's a team that, just like I think Clemson, is still punching in your teeth. Their oh, defense yeah. punched Penn State in their teeth, and Blake Corum, man, you saw him after the game. That nose. Cut open, bleeding down his face. There's a reason why he's my favorite running back. There's a reason why he's one of the best running backs yeah, in college football. I mean, that guy is tough, and he plays hard. And he has really helped propel this Michigan team. Uh, Texas Tech upsets Kansas. You know, after Kansas uh, beat Oklahoma, I really expected something big from this team. And, you know, it was a little bit of a letdown to see them lose to Texas Tech, a team that hasn't been so great this season. They, you know, they lost to Wyoming early. And uh, that doesn't really help, but then, you know, Kansas comes in, can't beat Texas Tech, that's, that's not a great look. Yeah, maybe it was just an out-of-body experience maybe. for Kansas mm -hmm. last week. I mean, what do y'all think about Kansas now, especially, you know, coming off a big win and then falling to Texas Tech? I mean, I think it's the best thing is just for Texas Tech to have another win, because that was a team I had as one of my, probably my Big 12 dark horse coming into the season. I think a lot of people had them as they're like, this could be, this could be a good year for Texas Tech. And then losing to Wyoming early, of course, that's going to hurt yeah. everything, part of your, like every part of your program. So I'm biased, so I had family go there, so I got to cheer for them. But. Then Her at the Arizona, not Arizona, Arizona hangs on to defeat Colorado 34-31. It looks like Colorado's hit that, that path that they're not going to win many more games this season. Yeah. I could see them getting one more, maybe. Maybe Utah State. Yeah, I could see them beating Utah State, and I, I think there will be Utah. State. But Arizona's a good football team. Mm. We know yeah, that. Arizona. Yeah. We've it seen them beat a lot of teams. Turn the program around. Yep. Yeah. Colorado's a good football team, too. Yeah. Yeah. But the Pac-12 is so stacked this year, and this is a Colorado team that these players don't really know each other, yeah. and they're and really it, rebuilding. And, it, and it's also hard to win without a defense and an offensive line. Like, it, yeah. It's the main, two it's main problems. Yeah, and they're, they're rebuilding. It's a rebuilding team. Yeah. And this will be a good Colorado team in the next three to five years. This will be a really good Colorado team. Uh, Dion, you know, or Coach Brown bringing his own guys. He'll be able to recruit his own people to Colorado. Obviously, he brought in a lot of guys through transfers. Yeah. These guys didn't all play together before. Yeah. And, you know, you don't get a – I mean, I guess you get an off season, but you don't really get a full off season. You had just learned at different colleges. Like, you know their playbook. You know all of this stuff. And now you transfer, and you're learning a whole new set of, you know, how we're playing. This is how this team is. It's kind of hard to adjust that quickly. But I think Colorado will be a really good team in a couple of years. I can, I can absolutely see that. And I, I think this is a team on the road to success. I think this, when I'm looking at only this season, I, I, especially with this Colorado team, I think that Stanford game kind of broke them. Yep. Obviously, I didn't expect them to win the Pac-12. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like after that game, they've just really they just struggled haven't to been find the a rhythm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, obviously to lose in the way they did in that game. And I, and I think... Coming out of this, I, I, I expect them to be much better in, in the coming years, and I also have to give props to Arizona. Very successful turnaround and, you know, a team to watch. Yeah. Next coming years. Yeah, I think Arizona is definitely getting back to that level that they used to be on. Yeah. And then James Madison just dominates UConn 44-6. There's not a question about this game. Dukes are now 10-0. This is one of the most fun and exciting teams in college football right now a team that hasn't played in the FBS very long, and they are just smoking teams. I mean, it's not close. This is, they've had some close games, yeah. but they haven't really had a game where I'm like, oh, they're gonna lose this, because it feels like it's a very competent football team, and they do have some tough games coming up. They have App State uh, and James Madison, I believe. 
think it's at I think it's at the Duke's uh, territory on game day. So that's a big game. I expect the Dukes to win under the bright lights. I I'd say it's a good football team too. They've been a good football team for years. But this James Madison team is a it's a scary team for a lot of different opponents. I could see them moving to a power five, not anytime soon. But, but at some point, they will. I could see them being a power five team. I mean, as, as someone who's had both an older brother and a, my dad go to JMU, I've heard a lot about how good this football team is. And, you know, last year I didn't fully buy into it, but I will admit I didn't know ball then. I know ball now. And the fact of the matter is the Dukes are the most exciting group of five team in the country. And the fact that they are still not cleared to play in a bowl game is, is unfortunate, but this is a this is a fun this has been a fun team to watch and, yeah. and I'm excited to see how they finish up. Yeah, I expect to see them in a bowl game. I, I really do expect to see them in a bowl game. FSU holds on to beat Miami. I didn't really get to watch much of this game. From what I saw it looked like FSU they just outplayed them. Yeah. Miami played well. FSU has just a lot of playmakers. There's a ton of playmakers on that team, a ton of good transfers that have learned that system very quickly. Uh, Mike Norvell has done a, or Mike Norvell has done a really good job of rebuilding that program from when he got there, because they were not very good when he yeah. picked it up, and he's really utilized transfers, and he's been great at recruiting, and he's gotten some good players. Yeah, and I know people like look at this game and like, oh, Miami kept up with Florida State fraudulently. They, they, can't, they, they not all this. It's a rivalry game. It's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a clean game. Be back and forth. I think, I think this game speaks to how complete of a team FSU is. I mean, the reason why they've stayed undefeated so long and then yeah. they can, you know, hold out in games like this is because they have such a talented roster and such right. a talented coaching staff. And I'm completely expecting them to win out. And I, I'm, this is a playoff team. To me. Yeah. I think this is, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to see this FSU team playoff, unfortunately. I'm still not completely sold, but I do I, think I, I'm going to be honest, football. I think they're going to get Molly Watt, but when they, for whoever they play in the, uh, <laughs> in the playoff. They'll make the playoff. Yeah, they're going to make them. Win. Hey, I don't know. Make make them in Louisville, like, depend, if Louisville makes the ACC championship, that's yeah. a good football game. That's, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to That's going to be a fun game, yeah. hopefully. Oh. <laughs> I hope. I hope it's not it's not just Georgia TCU game. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Jeez, hope not. Uh, Washington defeats Utah 35-28. It's a tough team. Washington faced a really tough opponent, yeah. and they beat them. Washington's still undefeated. Washington's still the best team in college football, in my opinion. I think they are my favorite team going into the playoffs, and they have a great offense, and they have a good enough defense where I could see them winning it. I'm probably going to be wrong because I thought this in 2016, too. Yeah. But if I'm right, I'm going to look really good right now. So, uh, but Michael Penix still, to me, you know, one of, if not the best quarterback in college football. My opinion's changed on that a little bit after uh, Jaden Daniels' game. Hmm. Cause that guy, that guy's special. Yeah. But, he's uh, pro ready. After he, like, the season he, he's been having, like, is so underrated just because yeah. LSU, the, the defense isn't well. But if LSU had an a, a average defense, they'll be a top five team. Yep. I think right now I'd put yeah. Jaden Daniels as my Heisman favorite. Yeah, for me, I think I'd agree. Yeah. I think the race is slowly coming down to Daniels, Penix, uh, Corum, or maybe Corum. Not Corum. I didn't mean to say that. Well, Harrison and Nix is what I meant. Nix, cool. Not Corum. But I do think Corum's up there still. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, Nix, Harrison, uh, Daniels, and Penix are your four. And that that's going to be a good race because I really don't know who to pick from this. Yeah, I mean. And Nate Wiggins, but that's a different yeah, score. That's a different score. I mean, watching this game, I, I Washington is a very fun team to watch, and they are a very good team. But I, and I, I, I think we have to give props to this Utah team. This is a team that has had a lot of injuries to some key positions. And the fact that they're still competing with a top 10 program, that's admirable. Yeah. And I know we joke about it a lot, but I actually do believe that this Utah team has got a lot of grit. Yeah, they do. No, this they, is they a good team. Lot, yeah. like, this is a, this is a great team. This is a gritty team. It's a super passionate team that plays hard. And I, I do like this Utah team a lot. I think they've done really well at you know, rebranding from where they were not very far, not very long ago. Yeah. They've, these past recent years for them have been really good. Really good. So I'm excited to see what they can do once they, you know, get a quarterback. You know, they have a good quarterback, but obviously they, they didn't plan for him yeah. at the beginning of the season. So. Uh, Missouri defeating Tennessee 36-7. to Came as a bit of a shock to me. I thought Missouri would win, but not in this not fashion. Like yeah. This is a good Missouri football team. Yeah. It's a good way to bounce back. Like, it shows you that, like, that, the morale for the team didn't go down after, the, mm -hmm. after that Georgia loss. Now, Eli Drinkowitz has done great with this team, and Brady Cook is a fantastic quarterback. I'm, I'm really loving this Missouri team. I, 
out. They have been so fun to watch. And, you know, they have a, a rough loss against Georgia that they could have won. Yeah. And they didn't win, but they could have, which shows how this team is still under the radar. I mean, this is still a sneaky team that yeah. is really, really good. So, yeah. It also shows that Tennessee is not as good as I thought. Yeah, I think beginning of the season, I believe ESPN posted something about how Joe, Joe Milton, yes. Joe he was going to be the most important player for the whole playoff picture. and He just hasn't. And I feel like that was a terrible best player to put there. Yeah. It's yeah. just disappointing, but I'm excited for their future with, uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last name at Nico. all. With Nico. Yeah, Nico's a great. He, he I, think, great I think Tennessee's going to be back up there in a few years. Yeah. No, I could definitely see Tennessee remaining in that high caliber teams. I think Josh Heupel's done a great job with them, too. So, uh, UCF destroys Oklahoma State, 45-3. Wow. Oklahoma yeah. State beat Oklahoma. Yeah. Then Oklahoma State got killed yeah, we, by UCF. Like Nash, this is Nash you remember me, me, uh, you and Luke was just talking about how Oklahoma State turned it around. Yeah. A, a, we were wrong. We were later, very they, wrong. They, they, they get beaten like that. Yeah. No, UCF, huge win for them. Huge win. Uh, another Big 12 win for them. They needed that. Yeah. And it's... I think this team will slowly become one of the better teams in the Big 12 as time progresses, as they get recruits, as they get the money to roll in. I think UCF has a good shot at being a really good Big 12 team in the future. I mean, this Oklahoma State team, man, I don't even know what to think. You know, I remember they lost to South Alabama. They got blown out by them at home. And I was like, okay, they suck. And they, and they beat Oklahoma. Better. And yeah. then you're like, okay, you know, that was a fluke game. They're back. And then UCF beats them by 42, and then I don't – they're bad, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I think they're very inconsistent. Inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. They're just an inconsistent football team. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, Georgia defeats Ole Miss fifty-two to seventeen. This was ugly. Hmm. This was not the game that anyone wanted to see. This, I mean, Georgia's head and heels above most every team yeah. in college football, maybe besides Washington, in my personal opinion. But I. Th- I, I think Georgia could three-peat. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I also wouldn't be shocked if Alabama beats them in the SEC title. I think that's going to be a great game. Yeah. That could determine the national champion right there. Very much so. Yeah. But this game is, it feels like classic Georgia when they play a good SEC team. It'll be 14-14, 14-10 by the end of the first quarter. And then, you know, they fly. Three, three quarters later, they know what they're doing and kill them. Yep. So that's all I can really say. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those games when you're watching it's 14-14. It's just each team has to score, and I'm just hoping Ole Miss to score every time. And then, I mean, it's just, it's just what I thought it was going to be from the beginning. I, I knew Ole Miss had a good offense, and they just ain't got a defense to stick, yeah. stick yeah. with Georgia. But yeah. it's definitely one of those games where it's like it's 14-14. Like that. Yeah. And you expect those teams to keep scoring, and it's look, just not happening. Look, look, I was texting my group chat. I'm like, uh, Ole Miss about to get them a game there. Three is that when it was 14-14? Yeah, and then yeah. three minutes later, it was 28 to 14. I said, no. Yeah, yeah no, it was over. Oh, Sorry, I had, to, I had to make the 14-14. It was 14-14 yeah. at one point. Yeah. Was, I had Nash was like the no, 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 he, he, I, he cut it right before you could have gotten it. It's, you know, it does seem like that. Like, this is, you know, every time Georgia plays one of these teams, man, it's, you know, 14-14. <laughs> no, but it is, it is, they're definitely a team that play, they play close early and yeah. then they come out yeah. of nowhere and just, they beat you. <laughs> Texas beats TCU 29-26. Um, you know, it's a good game. Yeah. Texas needs a bigger one against TCU than this. Uh, I think Sonny Dykes has, has done a good job with what he got from last year. He lost pretty much everyone yeah. on that staff, uh, his key players. This was a game that I could have seen start 14-14. And <laughs> but no, uh, t- Texas just, they're, I think they're by far the best 10 Best best team in the Big Twelve. Yeah, and it's not really close. I think Oklahoma, that was a just a shootout, and you know there's a reason they got that name, Red River. But uh, it was a great game, and Texas did what they had to do to stay in the playoff race. Yeah, it's all that matters for them. Then Oregon defeats uh, USC, 36-27. Bo Nix Heisman game right here potentially. Yeah, a couple of t- players had Heisman games this week though. Yeah. I mean, Jay Daniels had his Heisman moment, but Nick's had a huge game against USC's defense. That isn't great. Kind of expect to see this against USC's defense from a lot of teams now. Yeah. But I will say they held them. <laughs> they held them better than I thought they would. Yeah. 
So I'm kind of impressed with the defense improvement, even though 36 points still isn't great. Yeah. It's not the 50. That it's better than 50. Yeah. Yep. Better than 50. Okay. All right. Let's move on to NFL Week 10. I'm going to let Nash start this up because he has a lot to get off his, cha uh, his chest about his favorite team. Nash, hit him with the Panthers talk. It's been a tough year. That's, that's all you can really say. It's been a very tough year. And you think maybe we can beat the Bears, you know, we're almost as bad, you know, we're, we're almost as bad as them. You know, we, we, can, we can beat this team. We can, you know, come in on Thursday night. We can make this a game. We yeah. can win. The but, team you expect to beat, especially giving them, you know, your first pick. Yeah, our first overall like, oh, pick we're is there. Gonna beat so, them. so we would want to win there. But, you know, you think, okay, Panthers are going to win. Nah, Ooh. nah. Uh, this is just a tough one, man. You know, it's just, do the, do the Panthers, are the Panthers bad at football? Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're not great. They're in a really they're, – they're, it's a rebuilding process. But if the Bears are winning with their backup quarterback who was playing Division II football against a team that is supposed to have a pretty good defense, they did only hold them 16, which is impressive. The Panthers' offense has nothing going for them. They probably shouldn't have gotten rid of Joe Brady. I think he would have – been good to stay in this position. I think he looked better last year than they have looked this year. I don't know if you agree with that. But, I mean, there's not much going on in Carolina. That's all I can say. We're, I hope they do rebuild. NFL football is fun when there's a lot of good divisions. And the NFC South is a pretty fun division when they're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're currently back, not right? very good. Yeah, so, yeah. Speaking of the NFC South, Falcons lost. 25-23 against the Cardinals. One takeaway, Kyra Murray did return this game. And he had a pretty good game for his return. Yeah, he did, but at the same time, it's like... It's the Falcons shouldn't lose this game. Yeah, yeah. But at least yeah. it wasn't losing to, like, a backup quarterback or, like, a... I don't even know who their backup is right now. Who, uh, the Bears? No, the, the Cardinals. Is it Clayton uh, Toon? I don't, I don't know who they backup. He's still there as their backup right now? I don't even know. I think he might be. I'm not positive. Yeah, Clayton Toon for backup quarterback. Okay. So, at least it's Kyler, former number one overall pick, really good player. But the, the Falcons have lost to two quarterbacks who have been on the Cardinals roster this season now. Yeah. Back, and back, that's back, not back very good. Back-to-back back weeks, yep. Yeah. So this is just, you know, the Falcons team doesn't really have a culture of winning, and they make the rest of the teams in the NFC South look bad. I think that's all we need to say about that. Do we want to get into the next game? Yeah, we can go to the next sure. game. All right. <laughs> Ash, didn't your fans march on the stadium because of how bad you guys are doing this year? So the 49ers defeated the Jags 34-3. Uh, Riley, you're our resident fan. So called. We're back finally, you know. I... Debo Samuel's back from injury. Brock Purdy played great. It's just it's fantastic to see that we're not losing three straight games anymore and winning. Something you can't really relate to, I know. But uh, it's just good to see. What did you think about uh, Zachary Bolitnikov's play this week? Did you see how he played? I did not watch the game. But I mean, what do you think about him as a player? Third, like third string wide receiver. He had a big game. What do you think about it? Pretty good. He's not a real player. Yeah, so uh, I, just want to, I just wanted to see if he was a 49ers fan. Case closed. Honestly, Trace I said, Young had a I great watched, debut. I watched the Falcons game more than I probably watched <laughs> the Niners game, to be honest. Chase Young had a great <laughs> debut, though, for the 49ers. Yeah. Uh, him and, <sighs> him and uh, Nick Bosa combi like, well, combined. They had a yeah, half sack a really good game. that they just crushed Trevor Lawrence. Got a fumble. I mean, that's a scary, scary D-line, and they have a lot of players on that D-line. They have uh, Cleveland Farrell there who it's good to see him. He well. had a sack against yep. Trevor Lawrence. Yep. Yeah, he played well. Violence. So I, that's a great defense, though. That's a scary defense, and they keep getting pieces, and I feel like it might be rigged for the Niners because they keep getting guys like that. I know it's not, but they just keep yeah, getting I, guys. I was saying the Eagles and the 49ers one got dirt on the NFL. Just yeah, there's something. Because they get players, great pickups going on. Yeah, they're getting great pickups, great free agents. Uh, the Lions, yeah, they're still here. That was a great game. Beat the Chargers 41 to 38. Best team in the AFC North, probably. Yeah. Uh, them and the I can see the Vikings being up there with them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is a really good Lions team that I could still see going really far in the playoffs. They did get destroyed by the Ravens not long yeah, ago. It, it, but the Ravens are also one of the best teams yeah, in yeah. the NFL. 
And speaking about the Ravens, they did choke and yeah, uh, was, lose to the Browns, 41-38. I was told earlier by a Ravens fan, uh, a friend of mine, not to talk about this game. I don't know what went, yeah. what happened, like, what went wrong. Uh, defense and then also uh, Lamar threw two interceptions. Yeah, he got he got to be better. And, yeah. yeah, you have to be able to hold. Yeah. Especially, especially when you're pushing this Lamar MVP narrative. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I didn't agree with it when they were saying it, but it's just, yeah. yeah, that kind of put them out of it. Yeah, the real narrative needs to be pushed right now that CJ Stroud yeah. CJ might Stroud. be the MVP if, of football if, right if they, now. If they keep winning, then yeah. He might be the MVP of football, which they, is they, crazy to say. They just got to keep winning. Uh, especially, you know, a rookie who wasn't even the first quarterback taken off the board. Yeah, yeah. That's absurd. You know, a lot of people wanted him. You know, a lot of the number one team wanted him. Team with the number one overall pick, and they were talked down out of it. Um, you know, the fans were super excited about Bryce Young, but it happens. Yeah, stuff happens. It happens. Stuff happens. Some teams make mistakes. It seems like this could have been one. I still think Bryce Young will be back. It's yeah, I, I think he'll, he'll be better, better next match. year. But it sucks seeing C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I'm be honest. I don't think nobody nobody could do good with that O line the Panthers got. He don't have. He has no time help. to throw the ball. Doesn't help. The Broncos defeat the Bills 24-22. It was not a great game for the Bills. They turned the ball over oh. so many times. Then they fired the offensive coordinator today. Yeah. And Josh Allen didn't have a great game. They fumbled a lot. He threw, what, three, four picks? Uh, it was two, I think. It was two? two. Okay. Yeah. Threw a lot of picks, and they fumbled a lot. And you have to do better. Yeah, I saw people like, I know the offensive coordinator was, like, not great, but at the same time, the offensive coordinator not out there throwing it. He's not throwing interceptions. He's not fumbling yeah. the football. Yeah, yeah, so. I think he actually called a pretty good game, and his players did not execute. Yeah, perform. That's yeah. how I felt about it. Then Josh Dobbs continues his heroics. This guy, I've been a Josh Dobbs truther since his Tennessee days. I love the way this guy plays football. He has so much passion for the game, and he just he plays the game so well. His vision is Fantastic. He's really intelligent when he has the ball in his hands. I do hope to see him starting on a team that needs a starting quarterback next season. Yeah. I hope the Vikings don't get rid of him and potentially keep him as a starter, depending on the Kurt Cousins situation, his contract and everything. But I, I really like what Josh Schaub's been able to do with the Vikings. So, I mean, the Vikings are rolling again. The Super Bowl's back on. My prediction looks good for now. And then NCAA basketball. Clemson started off 3 0. Mm. They won the Asheville Championship Series. They beat UAB in a 77 76 game. And they beat Davidson in a 68 65 game, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And PJ Hall is very good. Oh, yeah. Right now, he is a first team All ACC player to me. Uh, Joe Girard had a huge game against Davidson, 17 points. His biggest game so far is a Tiger. Ian Shefflin has played great. Chase Hunter has played great. He's, you know, he's swinging the rock. He's doing a really good job at facilitating for the Tigers. So, I mean, what do you all think about this Clemson basketball team? I mean, I'm, I'm feeling really good. Yeah. I mean, especially considering in that the Asheville championship, we were playing Davidson. We were down pretty big early. It was 23-9 really 23-9. And, and the fact that we could rally and come back and win against, I, I have a lot of, this is very encouraging. I think, yeah. I mean, last year I felt like we should have made the tournament. And I feel like this team is almost better and, Absolutely. That's my expectation, at least, is that we're, we're you know, in March Madness. Yeah. yeah, and it seems to have a lot of grit. I mean, it seems like they're, they're super passionate, and they want to win games. Yeah. And this is a team I could see winning a lot of games. This is, yeah, this is the kind of team where, you know, it's, if they're playing a big program, let's say it's tied in the middle of the first half, like 14-14, <laughs> they're going to be the ones to pull it out. That's all I can say. <laughs> and, and, you know, let's move on to the rankings talk, though. There are only two teams with a loss in the rankings now. That's Michigan State and Duke. Duke is within the top 17. They're number nine. So they're within the top 10, actually. And then Michigan State fell all the way down to 18 after losing to JMU, who is ranked 24th now. And Arizona, after beating Duke, got up to third. They got uh, three first place votes. Kansas is currently one, Purdue two, Arizona three, uh, Marquette four, and UConn five, which I think is perfectly ranked. I, yes, it all makes sense to me. I think you could possibly put UConn over Marquette. They're very close to me. But those first three teams are, I think, miles above every other team. I think Kansas, Purdue, Arizona are the obvious three best teams in basketball right now. I think, Jamie, you could be really sneaky, yeah. I could, especially after being a Michigan State team that I think is really good. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened. It's, too early, to, it's too early to tell. It's too early. It's, you know, we're two, three games into the season. <laughs> 
But uh, I think Houston could be sneaky this year again. Tennessee is a good team. Yeah. Uh, just looking at the rankings, Creighton, uh, I think they are still a really good team. I think they always have a really good basketball team, though. Yeah. They, they've done well with coaching. I'm excited to see what happens with a lot of yeah. teams, though. And then, um, you know, if we're looking at just expectations for March, who do you have winning? Like, just super early expectations. Let's not, you know, uh, not go anything preposterous. All right. Um, I'll let you start, I, I, this is a team that I really liked last year, and I like for both stupid and valid reasons, but I, I actually really like Creighton. Yeah. What's the stupid reason? Because uh, the, the, the logo reminds me of Mordecai from regular show. That's what I thought it was. So, okay. Well. Yeah, but they're also just, they are a super good team, so yeah. it's exciting to see, you know, Creighton's basketball team this year. I think they're always a team that's going to be up there in the rankings. Really? I feel like right now I'm really high on that Arizona team right now. I believe Caleb Love, isn't it? Yeah. I believe he did a really good game against Duke. I like that on his shoe he had Tar Heels for life. And I think if they keep playing the way they're playing, we're going to see him late in March. Yeah, I definitely think we'll see them late in March. Chris? Uh, I'm high on teams like Kansas, Arizona. Uh, and uh, I know they're not ranked as high. I'm, I'm high on USC, too. They, yeah. They, they've been pretty good. Isaiah Collier. And, yeah, very, very good, player. good player. Especially when they get Bronny back, too. Yeah. Uh, he's supposed to come back this season if, you know, everything's yeah, I was good wondering start. I was wondering because I didn't see him. Yeah, him there's – uh, so it's still the issue with the cardiac arrest. Okay. So that's still being looked at by doctors. And he has – I think he has an appointment late November. And if it looks good, he should return this season is what the James family said. I would love to see Bronny yeah, play. I, I, he's a super play. exciting prospect. And I do really like the way he plays the game. I think he's – he, he plays very similar to his dad, just a smaller version. Yeah. And he can shoot the ball a little better. So I, I do really like what Bronny could bring to USC, though. If I had to go anyone, I would uh, hate saying Purdue just because of, you know, how they lost last year. year. And I, <laughs> but I do think Zach Eady's really good for college basketball. Yeah. Uh, if I'm going for just someone that would, you know, that could surprise and just pop out of nowhere. Uh, it is a ranked team, but I think this Alabama team is really good. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the Alabama team. We play them in a few weeks. We do play them in a few weeks, and we'll get to see kind of what to expect. I think Clemson could pull that game out. Yeah. Because I do think it's a good Clemson team, too. I think they could be sneaky going into March Madness, hopefully. But I, I do think this Alabama team is very is going to be under the radar for a little bit, and I feel like they like that a lot. But the NBA, uh, Tyrese Maxey had a 50-point game. I mean, Chris... I think you watched that one. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get to watch it. But I saw highlights, of it, but it was. I just want to talk about like great game by him first of all, but like the leap that he took this year. He, I believe he averaged twenty five a game since yes. since the Harden trade, and it, it goes to show like he, he looking to be a future All Star and a solid second second option to the Sixers, and the Sixers are looking like a great team so far. I know they're the number one seed, but and I don't know it's too early, but they are looking like a, a great team and. Looking like there'll be a problem. Yeah, and he dropped 50 on a really good Pacers team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the two Tyrese's have good games. Yeah, Halliburton yeah. always has a good game. He's their leader. But, yeah, Maxie's taking a huge leap yeah. for a Sixers team that really needs someone to step up. Too. What? I was saying it was a real unexpected leap. Too. Yeah, no, because he it feels like he kind of stalled yeah. for a little bit. But, you know, Harden's gone, and he had to take that step up. Someone did. And I'm really happy to see that he did take that step up. I think he's a really talented player. Yeah. He's great on defense, too. Yeah. So, yeah, he brings around really team. good all around. Uh, the award race right now, who do you see bringing, you know, Rookie of the Year, MVP, DPOI? What are we thinking about that now? Shall I let you put your ball knowledge on the line? You know, I'm, I'm just going to speak for the MVP because I think it's, it's still a bit early for some of these other awards, but I can really only see two players winning the MVP. Uh, my GOAT, LeBron James, and my other GOAT, LaMelo Ball. Uh, Mainly right. because I'm crazy. Yeah. So, who, so who, you th- who you think winning the MVP for real, man? I do not know ball. <laughs> I'm going to admit, I do not have enough NBA ball knowledge to even get you just, it. You just, close you just to called out names, huh? Yeah, I'm just. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I know it's not going to be James Harden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, what do you think? I mean, I'm honestly kind of in the same boat as Nash. I mean, from what I've heard, because I'm a Warriors fan, I haven't really been watching the games. I've heard Steph's been having a pretty good season yeah. so far. But I don't want to say him as an MVP front runner, but let's go with Giannis. Eh, the Bucks ain't been playing great basketball. 
But uh, so for MVP, I'm not gonna lie. Embiid been showing out this, this year. Yeah. He's he been showing out. Like right now, I think he in the lead. Just a, a good old basketball he been playing, and then you also can't count on Jokic. So, but I'm gonna go Embiid. Yeah, uh, MVP. I would. I, I'm thinking Jokic right now because yeah. he is in top ten in pretty much all the major every category. So, in. Yeah, that's and why I say you can't count he does that Jokic out. Almost every year. I mean, yeah. you expect that. Still think Tatum is in there. Just yeah. that could be biased, but he's had a great game. Pull up his uh, his numbers: 28.4 uh, or 28.4, and then nine boards a game. It's very good. I mean, he also has 3.9 assists on a, a team that has a lot of facilitators. Yeah, and uh, he also leads the team in steals. So I think Jokic and, and uh, Tatum are two. I think you guys think Doncic is always. Yeah, I was gonna say I one. can't forget about Lee. He averaged 32 points a game. Eight, yeah, eight, yeah eight, it's eight, absurd. Yeah, eight rebounds, eight assists. Yeah, he's he's definitely the leader on that team. Yeah, he I think leads in all three of the major stat categories, and I wouldn't be shocked if he took it home either. But Embiid yeah. is definitely a guy up there. My rookie of the year, I'm gonna keep it with Wimbanyama right now. Yeah. Him and Chet are that's the race. Uh, Grady Dick is. And nah. super underwhelming to me. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah, I thought yeah. he was going to be a lot better. He don't even play like that, to be, to be honest. So. No, nah, he's, yeah. he's playing about 15 minutes. He yeah, only has he about three points play, so. a game, which isn't great. And uh, I, I expect a lot more out of him. Yeah. But if I'm going defensive player of the year, I think there's a lot of guys you can put up there. I think Scotty Barnes having a really good defensive year. Yeah, Scotty Barnes. I think he's a really good player. Oh. I can see him bringing it home. Um, you know, Evan Mobley is another guy, I think, always. Be he he do for one soon at some point. Yeah, he'll win some. Uh, uh, Triple J, Jared Jackson Jr., I think he's another guy that's going to be up there. So. I mean, Triple J, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you know, that's the kind of guy that you'd, you'd want to put in a game when it's close. You know, it's close score, let's say 14, 14. <laughs> and, you know, you need someone to make some key stops so you can, right. you know, get a run going. Um, I haven't watched any basketball this year outside of Hornets really ball, so I have too, so. no idea if it's early. Things. It's early. It's early. Uh, in the Premier League, we can talk a little bit about what went down. The Wolves beat Tottenham. It seems like Wolves likes to pull off Upsets, some upsets, yeah. and <laughs> that's what they do. And you know, the beating thing, Tottenham's huge. The biggest thing right now is Tottenham's going through a lot of injuries. Yeah. So of course that's going to affect when you're you've gone so far in the season undefeated. And moving on, my team Brighton, we draw. To Sheffield United, who was at the bottom of the table, it's just disappointing I'm every just, week. I'm, I just, I'm like, why am I going to wake up at 9 a.m.? <laughs> already a mad that I'm up early and still angry at this team. There's just no improvement from yeah. what I'm seeing at all. Just Yeah, that, that on-field product is kind of pathetic. Speaking of pathetic soccer teams, Burnley took a tough loss to Arsenal this weekend, 3-1, to one, in what can only be described as completely expected. Burnley is now 20th on the table. Relegation time. This title charge starts Saturday the 25th. There you go. I believe this is a mean, good performance by Liverpool this weekend. Way to bounce back after two lackluster performances this, this past past week. We lost to Toulouse last Thursday. So that was disappointing. Uh, Liverpool's but, about yeah. to lose that damn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'd rather that than. Draw with yeah. Sheffield United. I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we back. And then Chelsea drawing four four to Man City, and it's just an offensive explosion. I mean, what a great game. Yeah. And super unexpected. I remember uh, hearing people in the press talk about it during the the Clemson men's uh, tournament game. It was electric. So that is a great game against two teams that are you know elite world class football clubs. I think Soccer Chelsea, teams, Chelsea is it's slowly time. starting to come back to where yeah. they have been in the past. You've got that Man City and that future Real Madrid. You know, it's a, it's a clash, clash of the clash Titans. Titans yep. And then, you know, an exciting game. Yeah. All right, let's kick it to overtime. Chris, your thoughts on UFC 295? You've got to give a stare down to the camera. Uh, I mean, it was a good good card. I was mainly only really cared about the, uh, the main event. Fajero won, won a light heavyweight title. Congratulations to him. But I feel like that stoppage was a little early. It was, other than that, it was, a, it was a great fight and great performance by Alex. Tom Aspinall won the interim heavyweight title. Great on him. And, yeah. I will say about the Prajaska stoppage, he did say he was out. In the, uh, uh, the post presser, he said he was knocked out there. Uh, so he, he, it, he it just like stoppage. watching it live, he just got like right back up. So it, yeah, yeah, yeah like, okay, but uh, and I, I completely agree. Watching it live, it did look yeah. like it was early. 
but uh, Prochowska did say that he was knocked yeah. out there. So which he did look. Knocked yeah, out. I am glad they stopped it, yeah. and he didn't keep getting elbows to the head. That would have been real bad. That would have been bad. So I think, I think in the moment it was not a great stoppage, and then when you look back at it, you're like, okay, okay, yeah, maybe it was a great stoppage. Yeah. Uh, Riley, you want to talk about? So Jimbo Fisher was fired. Uh, it, it's a surprise, but at the same time, not a surprise. When you look at it on paper, he's he's been a little bit successful. Had a winning record, won a New Year's Six Bowl. But then when you look at it, that how they have had a top recruiting class, and then they're just not performing. I mean, yeah, it was time for him to go, and I'm not even sure who's going to go to A&M. Uh, there was a comment today that someone asked Dabo about the A&M thing, and people are now assuming Dabo's going to go, which would happen, but then at the same time, it's against all of his no. beliefs. Yeah, I just want to say, do you guys have any idea who you might think? Um, I've heard Wes Goodwin floating around. I don't think Wes will go, but... Um, I've just heard him floating around. I don't yeah. think he's their top guy. Dan Lanning said he's not going. Prime said he's not going. Yeah, he definitely not going. If, if I'm a and I'm probably targeting a lower Power 5 coach, yeah. or I'm targeting James Franklin. I could see them pulling in James Franklin here. I was going to say uh, Chip Kellinger got fired from UCLA. I could also see him. Yeah, but yeah. getting fired from UCLA, I just don't see them yeah. offering him after having yeah. like no success there. Yeah. Um, but I do think James Franklin fits the A&M mold. I think he's a great coach that uh, hasn't done as great at Penn State as a lot of people thought he would. And I could see him ending up at A&M. And I could see Penn State trying to fire him, too, just because they haven't gotten the success they expect. They really haven't. So. Even the best team. No. No, I could see him going to A&M, rebuilding there, and maybe making some noise there. Now, should we want to talk about uh, the two powerhouses in Charlotte? Yeah, so uh, contrary to popular belief, Charlotte does not actually have uh, any major league sports team. They have two groups of imposters who show up throughout the week and just try and play the sports. And you know, looking at these two teams, I have to ask each. I have to ask y'all, who do you think is going to be worse by the end of their respective seasons, the Panthers, the Panthers or the Hornets? Panthers, hundred percent. Panthers. Panthers might end the season one in sixteen. Man. Yeah, they'll no, probably end the season with the worst team. Could so. see that happening, but like they I, say, they suffer from being only seventeen. Yeah. The Hornets, I don't think, will end that low. Yeah. I mean, they'll be low, but they won't be. They'll probably be like 11 or 12. Or yeah, like they that. won't be Panthers low. Where are they sitting right now? You know? Three and six, the uh, 13th in the East. Okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah they're it's, maybe they're worse than I thought. Yeah. But they, they're above the Pistons and the Wizards, and the Wizards have not played good basketball, contrary to what I expected. But, yeah, the, the Panthers, I think, are probably the worst team in the NFL. Then the great words are Nash. Are in the bottom six. Title charge starts next week. Title charge starts this coming Sunday. Keep pounding. That's all I can say. I want to talk about Clemson. I want to talk about Clemson men's soccer. Uh, they won the ACC championship in the ACC tournament in a exciting, a very fun game. Uh, I was I had the ability to go there and cover the game. What a cool experience that was in Cary, North Carolina. Um, the four and a half hour drive there, four and a half back, worth it to see. You know, Clemson win. Uh, had a great press conference with Mike Noonan and Usman Silla, and they were you know. They were great. They were very you know, excited, and they are focused on the NCAA tournament, which is great to see. And uh, Silla scored the 83rd minute equalizer uh, in a 1-1 game that went to penalties. And Clemson's been great in penalties in the ACC tournament. They haven't missed one. And the penalty shooter, I believe they did miss one. I want to say it was against Duke, but I'm not 100% sure. I was covering. I can't remember if it was Duke or Louisville. But uh, they've missed one penalty in the tournament so far, and it was... That was it was uh, during the game. It was Louisville. Louisville. It was during the game, though. It yeah. wasn't even the it shootout. Yeah. So they are nine and nine in shootouts, and I think they've held teams to four and seven, because uh, I mean Joseph Van Dem has been great in goal. This Clemson team could go super far in the NCAA tournament. And they are really fun to watch. So I'm excited to see where that goes with Clemson. So I think that's all we have. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will see you next week.